It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Um, so, Brian, this first question is from Christian. Uh, and Christian said, how is an UTMA taxed? And for those of you that don't know, UTMA is a custodial account that you can set up for the benefit of children. Uh, and Christian said, from what I've read through, a certain amount is not taxed. But once that threshold is crossed, the custodian has to include it on their return. Can you guys speak to this? So uh, you're a resident tax expert. I'm assuming you've seen this plenty of times over the years. How are custodial accounts or kids' accounts taxed? By the way, I love people setting up custodial accounts as part of step eight of the financial order of operations, prepaid expenses, because it is one of those awesome things if you've taken care of yourself if you can start saving at a young age for, for children or encourage them, maybe do a matching for the children once they start doing things, you can really show them the value of your army of dollar bills. Um, before I get into the actual taxation, I want to talk about the fact that you also need to be careful of what you put into your UGMA mm-hmm. accounts is that I'm a big proponent of index funds, um, and you can do targeted you know, uh, you know, index target retirement funds, they will be indexed. And what I like index funds is because they don't distribute out as much income because they're not doing as much tra- you know, trading or turnover um, that could be capital gain generating. So that's my first tip is to consider buying something that's very tax efficient yep. and index funds or targeted index retirement funds will fit that bill for for your your youngster that you're opening the account for. Now, this all on the taxation of this is all changed as part of the 2018 tax law. Um, what and this is this is pretty interesting is that it's 18, we know that the children you become majority age and you know around 18 years of age, well if your child is a full-time student that 18 actually gets expanded to age 24. A lot of people don't realize that. But here's the other part of this rule that's interesting. The first $1,100 of unearned income, meaning that it's from investment or passive, other things like that, that first $1,100 is going to be completely tax-free. Now, and and by the way, since these index investments are going to not generate a ton of income, you can have a pretty large account Mm -hmm. size that will not generate $1,100 Um, I I can tell you, my own daughters, they're in the $40,000 range, did not cross $1,100 of income. income And that's why I'm telling you, so you can get a lot without generating a lot of income. Once you cross $1,100, the next $1,100, so from $1,100 to $2,200, it's just going to be taxed at 10% at the child's. You will have to file. um, You could either file it on your tax return or file a separate tax return. Um, and then anything over $2,200 will be taxed at the parent's tax rate. So one of the things we always uh, try to remind our clients is that we never want to let the tax tail wag the investment dog. So yeah, there are some thoughts that go into whether you want to do an UTMA account and how that will affect taxability. But if you're trying to save for a specific goal and you know you want to help your child save for a down payment or a wedding or a fill in the blank, an UTMA is a great way to do that. And if the account grows and it becomes large enough that there is a taxable issue there, that's probably a good thing. Now, if you're like day trading in it and you're generating a bunch of gains for no real reason, or you're holding really inefficient investments, maybe rethink that. But by and large, if the account's big enough that it's triggering some taxability, it's a it's probably a pretty good thing for the benefit of the child. It means it's gotten to a, a critical mass that it actually is turning into a small army of dollar bills. I think this is a powerful tool for especially people who are before working age. I mean, because we've done the shows where we've talked to you guys that it's so cheap to become a millionaire if you start saving as you're born. Um, So if you're just doing a habit of $25 a month, $100 a month for for the kiddos, or this is a great learning opportunity if they don't have earned income, but maybe they got a gift from relatives around the holidays, you could do matching contribution with a custodial account. You can't do the raw Roth accounts, I talk about the power of the tax-free growth of Roth, but remember, Roth accounts, even custodial Roth accounts, require earned income, meaning you have to do some type of labor, um, start run a business, you know, babysitting, cutting grass, file doing something. Um, you got to file a tax return. This is an easy way to prevent you from having to do all that stuff, but still start the behavior of building an army of dollar bills. Uh, Chris, that was a great question and good for you for saving for the future and being late in the late steps of the financial order of operations.